Hey guys and welcome to the ninth episode of the Unity 3D How to Make a Zombie FPS Game series and today on this episode I will be going through the number of fixes that uh, I have gone through in the inventory script and also the added ability to pick up and place items. So first of all we're just going to go into the inventory script and I have already updated the script and I'm just going to have to go through it because I forgot to uh, duplicate, the duplicate the script before I started editing it so I'm just going to go through the, the whole um, inventory script and you guys can start from scratch if you want or you can um, just go through and make sure you edit everything up but I apologize about this but um, yeah I've just been fiddling around with it and forgot to duplicate it so Let's go start right up the top. So these two are your normal two normal two lines, and then you're gonna have to put in you're gonna have using system dot collections dot generic. It's gonna be the same as before, and then your open your the open of your script uh, line and declaring it and whatever. Um, then we're going to go here, and we've got the normal two lines of. Uh, creating the list called inventory and slots but this one now we're going to add one called equipped and that's actually wrong I believe it's equipped yep and what that is going to be is going to be a list for um, the equipped items that are down the bottom so they're always going to be shown but I'll get onto that later then you're going to have your declaring your database as usual these two lines are already in already in the script and then you're going to create a public type of integer and call that total items and what this is used for is to calculate the total items of a certain object in your inventory um, but we'll go into that more later um, we're going to declare two variables um, I think these were just testing, I'm not sure if we still need them. I think we still need them, but I still I think I need to play around with them to remove them so then it's more, uh, we don't have to declare everything that we uh, add to our player, uh, equipped or whatever. So just a public game object M9GO, which is the M9 game object. Um, then a public game object camera main and this is the camera that is on the player's game object but we're going to declare all that later then we're going to create two private variable private bool variables so true or false variables and they're going to be private bool counter and private bool ticker and these are just like uh, just random things that I use to uh, check if something's true and then if it is then um, you continue if it isn't then you do another setting but we'll get on to that. so then in our start we're going to have the normal d data uh, declaring finding the database script um, with the tag finding the object with the tag item space database we declare the slots and then we're going to um, create the inventory that I'm pretty sure it basically does so the only thing different about this is that we added in this so um, what we normally had was just a blank spot and it was um, for the objects and then on top of that blank spot it added another box which had the um, item name in it if you had an object but what I've changed it to now is if it's a um, it is an actual object of database dot item type zero and we'll get onto that but it's just of absolutely nothing it's just a random space and what this is used for and um, what I've done down here is changed it so that they're not boxes they're buttons and what it, this can be used for I don't think I've implemented it yet is that if you want to move it around your inventory uh, move objects around your inventory you just click on it and then click on a random space and then it will uh, move items or things like that so um, what we do, what it is is it's just setting if there's nothing in the space there then we're going to create set in the space we're going to create a nothing um, object so nothing an object with variables of nothing so if inventory of I the one that we're sorting through dot in item name equals equals null then we're going to call inventory I is equal to database dot I item of type 0 
So then we're just going to go down here, and this, these were just used for testing purposes, but we don't need any of three at the moment, so just keep with one. Add item one, and I think every time I save now, it's going to zap me up to the top, which is annoying. Um, then we go to onto item, update, sorry, and I think this is normal if get the key down I then show your inventory do the opposite of what inventory is equal to the boolean and then this one's new I think is if show your inventory equals equals false then we're going to go camera main dot set active bracket true bracket so what that does is if our inventory we've got the game object camera main um, what this does is if we, I'll go into it more detail when we go into the disable camera script um, but what this does is if you click on the inventory button it's going to disable the camera because uh, before you could open the inventory and close it and keep running around and the whole game would just keep going so what I did was stop time in the game but you could still move your camera so it was a bit annoying so what you can do is do a, di a couple of different things which I will change this in the future but what I did was just set it to just disable the camera so the background is just grey and then nothing continues and then when you click I again it goes snaps back to normal game mode so if you show inventory equals equals false then camera main so the game object camera the camera main the camera game object that is located on your player we're going to set active which is the um, tick at the top of the screen so if we go to the first person control this tick is the set active thing so if you turn that to false it's going to untick that and then see how it's gone and if you tick it back then that's active it's set active true so then we'll just go on from that so void on GUI um, what we're going to do is this is the time for when we're stopping time um, or we're pausing the game for, for example um, if show inventory equals equals true then we're going to set time the time scale time dot time scale equal to zero so the normal time scale is equal to one and you can slow down time and then increase time by using the time dot time scale uh, method um, then we're going to call open inventory which is going to go down here and open the inventory but we'll get to that later um, then it's going to go if else sorry sorry about that um, if show inventory is not equal to true then we're going to call the if again sorry if we're going to call the this statement if show inventory equals equals false so that's just like kind of doubling up the thing so it's going to say if that's not true then if if this is true then we're going to go time dot time scale equals to one so if inventory is false then we're just going to set normal normal inventory then we're just going to get set it back to normal speed but if you were to ever change time to a different speed then if inventory was not open then it's not going to work so this you'd have to edit this um, if you were going to do that but we'll continue on so now I have eight equipped boxes down the bottom and I think it is um, weapon is the first one ammo is the second one then there's armor for head chest arms and feet I think and then there's yeah, then there is two sp spare ones which are for placing. So for objects that you click on and then they go to there and then um, you can click on the numbers that correspond to those boxes and you can place objects from there. So total space of the equipped is 8, so it's, we're going to go 4 into jet x is equal to 0, then we're going to call x when x is less than until then we're going to go until when x is less than 8 then we're going to add 1 to x um, equipped so this is our uh, our equipped um, thing so we're going to have to just change it every time I save equipped to double p instead of tp dot add and then we're going to add a new item for every so we're going to add that what we did up here basically um, then we're going to say if equipped x so this variable where we're going to shuffle through it for, for every one in equipped dot item name if it is equal to null then we're going to set equipped x equal to database dot item zero which is exactly what we did up here 
um, just for the equip thing. And then we're going to create a rectangle. And we'll go, I made these ones smaller, so um, screen dot width divided by 2 plus x times 85. And I think 75 is the width of the box, so you add 10 on for the width of the box. Then you subtract, and I think it was 125 off of that. Um, then that's just that first one. That's the uh, top, I think, or left and right, and then we, yeah, then we subtract uh, the, wait, slots x times 75, I don't think we even need this, oh, That's that one. And just remove this. See how that goes. Um, anyway, we can fiddle around with that. Then uh, screen dot height minus a hundred, and then we're going to go seventy five by seventy five. Then we're going to call the GUI dot box, and we're going to give it the rectangle, the one that we just made, or slot rect, and we're going to give it the x dot two string, just like we did in the previous one. Sorry about that. Every time I control s, it's, it puts me at the top of the document. Um, so then we're going to go if the equipped dot if the for every slot if the if the equipped item item name is not equal to nothing if it's not equal to blank then we're going to go if GUI dot button if you click on that if you click on the button of the um, slot rect so it's gonna create a button on top of that a button on top of the boxes and if you click on the button that is on top of it um, and it's gonna have so we're gonna just create the button so go we dot button in the position of slot rect and then we're gonna put it as the what text we're gonna put there is equipped x dot item name plus blank plus a space plus equipped dot total number. Now total number is a new um variable I added to every single item and that was um the so then I can calculate the total number of items I had of that one type and then stack them. So I will get into that later, but um, I think I only added this for test purposes, but we'll just add that in for now. So just copy that, and then we're going to set, here's when we use the counter. So if we click on the button, and a, if we click on an item that's in our equipped inventory, say we have the M9 equipped, if we click on that button or for the M9, we're going to set counter equal to false, then we're going to search the inventory, so count. Um, through the number of inventory slots <clears throat> then we're going to go if inventory if for each slot we're going to go if the item name is equal to the one we just clicked so if if there is already an M9 in our, in our um, inventory so we have an M9 up here in our inventory and we click on the M9 in our equipped and we click it then it, we're going to go inventory so the one that we found, so M9, we're going to got total number plus equals to the number that we had in our inventory, our um, equipped, equipped slot. So if we had two down, two M9, well it works better for bullets, so say if we had two M9 bullets down here equipped, and then up the top here we had six already in our inventory that we picked up after we submit, um, sent it to our um, uh, ammo slot. If we clicked on that, then it's going to add six plus two, and it's going to equal to eight. So that's going to just add the total number and make it stack. So that's easy. And then we're going to get set counter to true. So basically, what this is doing is, if we found it, we're just going to check to see if each one is true. If it's not, if this is true, then we're going to break out. If it's not true then we're going to um, create the item. So then if you found the item, it's going to break out of the for loop. But then if we're, if, if, if 
it's gone through all of this and it couldn't find one then we're going to go if counter is still equal to false then we're going to create another loop for the same inventory length and then we're going to create an if statement for if the slot for if for every slot in the inventory their item name if it is equal to um, blank if it's equal to blank so if there's a spare slot there then we're going to go inventory j for the one that the slot that we found that is blank then we're going to set that equal to the item that we click and then we're going to go counter equal to true and then we're going to break out of that again so that's just going to that's like a nice equal uh, nice testing sort of thing that we use there so then we're going to call put in inventory x and that's another um, method uh, another function I built in which I'll go to down the bottom I'll show you more down the bottom and then we're going to go equipped x is equal to database dot item zero so we're gonna the slot that we just click say if we click the m9 slot we're gonna make that black back to blank but set it to black again so then we're going to check the empty slots again which is a method we made before but I'll go over that again because I